I remember that day, man. That was... You literally had to shake, like, you just got in bed with me. Mm hmm And I know people hear that and be like, oh, that's weird, but when you walk into a room and the whole room smells like death, and... Dude, you look just like a dead person laying there. And... I literally, I was like, what, what do I do? Like, how do, I tried to shake you. I tried to talk to you. Nothing, no response. And Jill said she couldn't get any response out of you. And you were just laying there. And I remember, I remember crawling up on your chest. Just, I know that sounds weird. <laughs> I know people are going to be like, what? But I remember just crawling in bed, crawling up on your chest and laying on you and wrapping you up and squeezing as hard as I could. And I was like, I want you to live. And uh, it was, that was a hard day. And uh, that's why when I look at these watches, like a lot of people look at this and go, Oh, you get forty thousand dollars of watches, <laughs> but but literally, I could take all of those and stomp them into the floor tonight. It's not the watch; it's the journey. Mm -hmm. It's always the journey, and um, what you've overcome, the battle you've won. Like that watch represents. Zane and Creed gets to have a daddy, you know. You get to have a happy life. It's a, uh, it's unique. You saw the daily bread. Here's the new recipe. You can't expect to see more transparency. Five thousand six figure earners. This success to me, giving the best of me, my living legacy. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 10 of My Living Legacy. This one's gonna be a little different, as you can see, because we've got uh, this illustrious, beautiful panel <laughs> of men in front of you. Uh, but we are in Frank's Gentleman Salon here in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, thought it was the perfect location, environment for us to be in to have a, a little talk on this episode. Um, coming at you with something a little bit different, but something that's extremely powerful and I think important uh, for all of you guys to hear. So I wanted to bring uh, Joseph, Jeff, and Nathan uh, up here with me. And uh, you guys have heard uh, my story a little bit, and I've mentioned a number of different times these mentors that came into my life, and I've kind of talked to them at, as though they were kind of fictional characters. But they are actually real human beings, and these are them. Um, now the story that they may tell you on how that actually played out, that they found me in a dark alley and it wasn't that dark it was a light <laughs> it was it was a dark alley it was just afternoon this makes it even worse <laughs> but but these are those guys that came into my life and uh, are the reason why i am sitting here in front of you today uh, and that means a whole lot to me and these guys do as well but we wanted to uh, talk to you about a, a kind of another situation and a circumstance that grew us all ultimately closer together uh, and the meaning for why in the world there's these watches uh, sitting in front of us. So, so you see these watches, um, Panerai watches. Look, a year ago, I didn't even know what a Panerai watch was, <laughs> honestly. Um, and I really didn't care to own one. And that's $40,000 of watches sitting there. And that's our watches. And it represents something pretty special. Um, uh, a year ago, Nathan um, came to us and said that he wanted some help overcoming a challenge in his life. And look here, everybody struggles with something. I don't care who you are. If you're sitting out there in judgment when we talk about this, then fuck you. I mean, seriously. Because, and, and as PG as I can put it, but fuck you because every single body struggles with something and they have something that they're overcoming in their life and when they overcome it everybody should celebrate 
and that's the family that we've created so these watches here represent an overcoming um, so we we sat down with Nathan and Nathan talked about how he felt like he was a day to 18 months away from a problem and that problem was alcohol and uh, Nathan how was it affecting you it was just terrible binge drinking but I was at a point of something had to break and and I knew that if I kept on the way that I did I, I did have something that was semi-tragic happen to me that really woke me up but had I continued I didn't know if it would be taking someone else's life out taking my own life out um, and then having kids and a family and business partners and so many people within our business that rely on you. Um, it was at some point I realized that the pain that I was suffering for, for finality had to be it. Because if I kept going, I knew that... Um, it was almost like I had a flash before my eyes and I've, I've had people in my family that have been in prison and, and some of those decisions that led them there were because of alcohol. Sure. And I knew that I had to make a change um, or something terrible was going to happen. And, uh, and when did, when was the focal point, when did that come face to face with you where you went, I'm, I'm done? It came at a place where you know, coming through a separation um, and, and having a lot of pain there, which brought a lot of pain from the childhood. Here I am again being another failure like my father and um, repeating some things there. And so, but when I realized it, it, it happened over, over a two day, three day event weekend that we put on in celebration for our agents within our business where I should have been really celebrating and all there too, mm -hmm. instead of drinking the way that I was, buying a lie that I had to drink to be able to be jovial and, and outgoing around all of our people, sure. um, because I bought that lie for years. I thought I had to drink to be social. Sure. Um, and, I, and that's the exact opposite, but I would bought that lie so I could have an excuse to keep going at it. And people, people, People buy that lie. I mean, Tyler, you bought that lie for a long time. What, December, what, 19th? Yeah, December 10th will 10th be a year for me. Will be so a year a for you. <clears throat> a couple of weeks. So yours was October and... October 10th. What's that? October 10th. October the 10th. And uh, I remember talking to you. And you and I have, unbeknownst to these other people sitting here, you and I had had conversations about this before. Oh, yeah. Over the years. Over the years. And we've never talked about that in front of people. But we, we talked about it. And you had given it a go before. Mm -hmm. I did, and I failed. Um, um, it was I, a different scenario in this situation, though. It was totally different. It, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was a do or die. Right. That's what it was. Um, it was do or die, and um, I knew I didn't drink a drop until I was almost 25 years old. Yeah. And I would get glimpses of how far off the rails I had gotten right. from who I was and how I felt about myself. My confidence, while I seemed confident at times, I would just have moments of confidence. My confidence was in the gutter, man. At the lowest, I felt the lowest I had ever felt. Um, the depression and the side effects that would come from the alcohol afterwards were crushing. Affected everything that I did. I'm naturally I'm a people person. I love people. I love being around people. After a, a night of drinking, I would find myself not taking a call, see someone in public, and completely avoid them because I felt so low I couldn't do it. Um, you remember that Miami airport walking around? I do. That was rough. Yep. That was a rough day. It was, and that was, the, that was the day that I finally put my foot down. 
after talking to, to the, there was the three of us and we talked about it. And, you know, having, having a weekend where you lose a Panerai because you're drunk. Because you're, yeah. Th these four Panerais, what, you've lost a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> a Breitling and a Panerai. Oh, one of them was a Breitling, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. just uh, ridiculousness. I mean, and the fact that it was just a watch that can be replaced and just, you know, th that's really not a big deal, but it's, it's symbolic for what I accomplished and what I lost, but really what I've gained through sobriety. Uh, those watches are just, they're a great reminder. And, and it also, knowing that we were all going to be a part of it, you know, I had tried this before and I failed because it was hard. Yeah. And, and I put yeah, my... You, you, you tried on your own. I right? did. I tried to do it on my own. Tried to do it on your own. And I'm telling you, a lot of times, man, with... I don't even addiction or what, uh, patterns, habits. What people do, um, they don't have a they don't have a tribe. They don't have a team. They don't have a, you know what I call it? I call it La Casa Nostra. I call it our thing, like the mafia does. And I know that's weird, and people people are like, oh, that's cliche, but that's our thing. And um, but people try this stuff on their own. And they don't have a support system around them and they're not willing to reach out for help but i will never forget you you asking for help in the miami airport yeah. going i gotta beat this and i know you put your foot down and we really didn't even provide but like but i mean we loved on you and i told you i would kill you if you <laughs> if you messed up but <laughs> well but what, i mean you did it what what spoke to me was that it was important enough as a as as us willing to invest forty thousand yep. dollars into me to come clean and, and to get sober and and that's significant that's huge and that made me realize too how much love there was and how as a bird's eye view from you guys seeing what was happening to me it really clicked at that point and i remember I remember in that airport th just the strength that I had knowing that it wasn't going to be three months and I was going to slip up in privacy and have a drink and no one's going to know about it and, then it. and then it moves on to something else. I knew at that point this was it. I was going to do it. And the first month was difficult. And then there was such a strength that came from just me thinking about the four of us and, and what was hinging on me doing this. Mm -hmm. The importance of that is what fueled me and gave me so much strength to continue to be around people that were drinking, yep. to smell it on people, and to never crave it. Yep. Did I have moments where I thought, man, you know, it's hot out. Man, it'd be awesome to have a drink right now. I would think that, but what I... what God, whatever gave me was a feeling of sickness. JC. <laughs> Joseph Caldwell. <JC>. Uh, <laughs> the sickness that would come over me that would remind me of all the, the pain. I, I can't think of one thing, not one thing positive that happened to me. Not one decision, not one relationship, not anything gained positive while I was drunk or drinking at any time. Now, was every single time I drank bad? No, but 90% of the time, and that is by far in itself enough. 1% is enough, right. you know, and, and to wake up thinking about the weekend or to think about, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere, when can I get my drink? And it control your life that much, you've got a serious problem. And it wasn't until I really just came to grips with, with that and could look through my past and see all the devastation and the recklessness and the things that had happened and the tears of other people that have cried for me. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, I'm not going to be this selfish anymore, period. I'm done with it. Hey, I think I, I, this is amazing, you know, but I, I tell you, everybody that's overcome anything has, has done it with, a, with a, either one, two, or three or more people that have, have influenced them. And um, I don't know anybody that's overcome anything significant or made any changes without anything. I can say that for me, just changes that I've done 
has been because of you guys, all, all three of you guys, um, because it's motivational. There's, there's um, when you're accountable to more people than just yourself, people try to get on an island, and it never works that way. So people that want to want to change something, they need to get somebody that cares about them so that they can talk back and forth. There's nothing that I wouldn't tell Tyler or you or Joseph about something. If I was really having a rough time with something, I would, and that's, it goes more than business, you know, and it, it's got to be a, um, the depth of stuff that goes more than just a, a money thing. And that's what, that's what is unique that mm -hmm. all of us care more than just about, if we didn't have the business, we'd still be friends. We were friends before the business, really good friends. And we, were uh, friends and we would be, we would, we yeah. were, we were butt men sitting in the, sitting in Joseph's well, kitchen you going, just call us? going, man, <laughs> son. Did you just say we were butt men? <laughs> <laughs> no, sitting back when, back when, when we were sitting in the, in the kitchen going, man, when we have 25 grand in our account, it's going to be amazing. 25 grand account, and know. then 50 grand. That's in the business account. And then we can kind of like, we can rest and know that, man, things are good. And, but, um, with Nathan though, man, it's, it's been a, not only the relationship thing is massive in that, in, but I think it is incredible because I know just in, in talking to people and just over time, um, I've said, hey, Nathan's not drinking anymore. And they're going, really? It's like, and dude, I'm telling you, it impacts people. And you've impacted people just with your choices in, in me and us. You have, you have actually made a difference for, I mean, that's tough, man, it's, for a full year. And it is... For me, I consider it to be one of my biggest accomplishments for certain. It's a huge win for me. But I, this last year, what I did as opposed to the two or three times that I tried to stop before, when I would have conversations with people, I was, I was honest. I was truthful about why I stopped. It wasn't because there's too much sugar in it and it's my diet that I'm trying to not drink right now. It was, I'm, I'm cutting down. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, Hey, you know, you meet someone sitting there at dinner or at, at, at an event and, and people are drinking and you're not drinking, you get, you know, water with lime or you ask for a non-alcoholic beer and they're like, Hey, or they, people are doing shots and I refuse the shots and people, people say, What's wrong? yeah, people are like, what's wrong with you? Or, Hey, I noticed you're not drinking. Why aren't you drinking? And it switched from, when I was real with people to people actually wanting to have a conversation with me about it, I couldn't believe how many people were struggling with the same thing and talking to me about how I'm doing it. I mean, these were extensive conversations with some people and that fueled me as well. Yeah. It gave me so much just strength in, in knowing that I was doing the right thing for myself. Um, but, knowing that I could help other people too in, in conversations with it was, was huge. And I love helping people. So what I thought at that point is I'm going to turn my, my biggest weakness with alcohol into my, my greatest strength, you know, and, and helping people with it along the way. And it's been amazing. You I know? love that. Yeah. And you know what, man, Nathan is, I'm going to talk about you like you're not here. So he's bigger than life. Right. I mean, the, when when I would walk into a bar with you, it's hard for me to talk about it. Um, but everybody, like, we walk into a bar and every dude wants to be you. Every girl wants to be with you. <laughs> um you're just bigger than life, right? And you live that big persona for so long. Um, but very few people, very few understood the struggle. Um, uh, very few, because when you're out there and you're having fun and you're blowing it out, very few people understand the pain underneath and they understand the pain that it's causing the people around you. So talk to that because somebody's going to see this and they're going to go, oh, well, that's easy. Those four guys, $40,000 of watches, they 
helped him through that over a year or whatever. So talk, go back a little bit. I remember and the and time talk about talk about a little bit of the the shitty stuff. I will. Um, time that comes to mind is is after two or three days of struggle of things on my mind and just drinking nonstop. You know, I, I don't. I have no idea how much alcohol I went through in a two or three day period, but it was a lot. Mm-hmm. And I remember my body physically would get to the point emotionally whatever was going on scientifically with my brain it was pure devastation and all i could think about was wanting to be dead it's all i could think about and and i remember um being in the rental house our house had burned down we'd gone through that laying in the bed couldn't get out of the bed at probably 11 o'clock and i remember uh, Jill having to call you because I wanted to just be done, man. I had kids. I had uh, a business with you guys that was thriving. and But making constant wrong decisions in my thought process and my belief in in life and problems, I've created bigger than they really were. The problems really aren't that big, and most of them can be fixed in a split decision. But I had this addiction, man, that kept me driving back to alcohol, back to alcohol, and it was literally destroying me. But that depression and those suicidal thoughts uh, were overwhelming at times. And and that comes from, you know, there's family history there with, with suicidal thoughts and attempts and things like that. And so I was literally toying with um, a chemical and, and a drug, basically, um, that put all of those thoughts that if they could be there at the worst. And um, it, it's shameful to think you know, that a person can do that to themselves when they have two beautiful boys that are so healthy and family and friends that love you and care about you so much. Life, really, at that time, without the alcohol, was wonderful. Alcohol was the problem with the whole thing. And it was the way I thought about it. It was the way that I just bought the lies, bought feeling like how could you feel that bad and just want to be gone to thinking that you had to have it and that you were better because of it yeah. it's, it's how the hell does that's that how happen? addiction works i remember that day man that was you literally had to shake like you just got in bed with me mm-hmm. and i know people hear that and be like oh that's weird but when you walk into a room and the whole room smells like death. And did you look just like a dead person laying there? And I literally, I was like, what, what do I do? Like, how do, I tried to shake you. I tried to talk to you. Nothing, no response. And Jill said she couldn't get any response out of you. And you were just laying there. And I remember... I remember crawling up on your chest, just, I know that sounds weird. <laughs> I know people are going to be like, what? But I remember just crawling in bed, crawling up on your chest, and laying on you and wrapping you up and squeezing as hard as I could. And I was like, I want you to live. And uh, it was, that was a hard day. And... Uh, That's why when I look at these watches, like a lot of people look at this and go, oh, you get $40,000 of watches. <laughs> but, but literally, I could take all of those and stomp them into the floor tonight. It's not the watch. It's the journey. Mm-hmm. It's always the journey. And... Um, <laughs> what you've overcome the battle you've won 
Like that watch represents Zane and Creed gets to have a daddy. You know? You get to have a happy life. It's a, uh, it's unique. So, and you know, I, I wanted to make sure people hear this story. Because there's somebody out there that's struggling. Or there's somebody out there that knows somebody that's struggling. And they're just not saying anything. Or they're just too embarrassed. Or they're, they think they're going to offend them. You think I gave a f about offending you? you no. Know, no. This is... Man, people... Your friends are important. People are important. Your... Your family's important, and uh, and and making that move, doing what you need to do, getting them to do what they need to do. That's there's nothing more important. It's truly been night and day. I mean, to to think that I had problems before, um, and re rely on drinking, and still <laughs> never deal with the problem. Right. To it just amplifies. It makes it go away for a second. Yep. And then when you wake up, you're like, fuck, that's terrible. Oh, it's awful. To, to, you know, I can think over this last year facing more challenging things than I've ever faced and dealing with them and having it worked through in 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And it, it's okay. Yeah. Um, it is give it the peace that that I have now with myself and the confidence that is back. I can't tell you, man. I mean, probably one of the most upsetting points of, for me personally, when I would privately think about what I was doing to myself, I would look back to that 22, 23, 24 year old kid that had so much more of life put together than I did as a 33, 34, 35 year old business person. Yep. And, um, I just, couldn't believe where I had allowed myself to get to. Yep. But in such a short period, just two months, three months, when I remember when I hit like four or five months. You remember me calling happened. you? Something just happened. You no. remember me calling you because you had a non-alcoholic beer downtown and somebody told me you were drinking? Oh, yeah, yeah, You yeah. remember me calling yeah. you? Yeah. I was like, motherfucker, it's on now. I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> like... I do remember that, man. I remember, like, man, I'll I'll swear on anything. I promise you. I no, I know, anything. I know. But um, no, I know. I was gonna hold your wiener and and uh, make sure that I was gonna test the <laughs> piss. Like I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. But I remember man, that. I mean. Yeah, I remember. But dude, that's just dude. We we uh we look out for each other. Period. That's really and Tyler, you 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 jumped on this thing last December, man, and you did it. You did it. You you shared it with us, but you came to this conclusion on your own. Mm -hmm. And part of it was watching Nathan. Yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. Part of it was well, watching that, Nathan. I, I think that's what <clears throat> may not have been the reason why I did it, but it was the it wasn't like the the catalyst for me like understanding why i needed to but it was the hope in that wow it doesn't look that bad because you made it look easy i mean like like literally like after the first month or so i was like it's just it was just like a different lifestyle like I, and, and i know it wasn't but like you from the outside looking in it was just like nathan doesn't drink anymore and he's not hung over and like and now like having f been able to feel that myself like into that third month, fourth month, like I felt like I freaking unlocked superhuman powers, like yeah. legitimately. Like I, like with my body, my mental clarity, I literally felt like I was at such an advantage against everyone else, um, which was, which was crazy. But it was, it was seeing you because, because quite frankly, I had the just as bad if, if, well, let's just say just as bad event at that same event in miami like i had a oh, horrible don't, don't make me talk about your, your i mean joseph carried me to my room that night uh in Oof. miami and i just wasn't ready at that point to quit so an old tyler um, had almost a was a tie yeah that, that was a, bar. a tie yeah <laughs> just a tie. tie yeah and I mean, and like in and and i let 
another two months go by push, pushing it off and, and pretending like it wasn't a problem. Um, but it wasn't until I, had I not seen Nathan's success with it and, and how he handled it, I would have never, I don't think, even tr attempted uh, to quit. Um, Dude, do you see how, this is the thing, man, good decisions that you make when you when you're open and vulnerable because you were vulnerable about it so are you you both of you were so vulnerable about it that and even now like this is going to affect people when they see this they're going to go yeah i got a problem huh i need to i need to change i need to do something about that and if they can do it i could do it you know i may not get a panerai watch at the end of the day but we did um, the, but, I, uh, I can remember those last 60 days, I would text Nathan every now and then. I'm like, stay strong. Stay strong. <laughs> stay don't strong. You, he would, he would go on a vacation somewhere. I'm like, don't you ruin don't this. Don't you ruin <laughs> this Panerai watch deal for us. That was, that was something that, you know, when I would go on these trips and you guys knew that I was there, I knew in the back of your minds that you had to be like, man, he's tried this before. He's going to fold. He's going to break. And I was like. I, I just remember thinking they have no idea how much strength I have well, right now. I write it, all the checks in the business. I was hoping you would take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> no. I knew you were, but I, there was no I was like, turning back. I was like, Nate, Nate you want some Sprite? This, sniffing all those drinks just again. <laughs> No, but it's true. Like the ripple effect that that it creates is incredible. Like, so I, I did a post on Instagram and Facebook last night, and it was talking about this past week when I was in Cabo. That was the first time that I'd really struggled with it, and not struggled in like a um, feeling of temptation to drink, but struggled just mentally, being frustrated, having everyone around me drinking and partying, and 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 just this feeling of like, you know, my mind goes a million miles an hour always thinking about all this stuff we have going on what's next and like just the ability to just relax and like let loose a little i was like well i i deserve to be able to feel like these people are feeling all around me it's like I, i've earned it like i i earned the right to just like chill out and it was just being frustrated in the environment that i was in um and so i, I did this post about it because i'd met this this awesome uh guy that owned the hotel and uh, resort and restaurant and bar that that we were staying at and he hadn't drank in like 14 years or something and so some of the conversations that sparked from that and um, were incredible and and really helped me through that that week but like right before we got here i looked and there's 130 something comments now oh yeah on these two posts and like four of them i think i counted are people saying that today's day one of them not drinking after That's reading awesome. the post um and the thing is like and i, and I think people are probably listening and or watching this um, we don't have anything against alcohol. No, hell for no. I mean, we Joseph's got a, don't. <laughs> Joseph's got a I got a damn idea. drink right but now. Like, and, and, and quite frankly, I envy those that um, can can drink socially. I just can't do it. Like I, yeah. and, and my issue, and my issue wasn't a frequency issue. It was a quantity issue. Like, I'm just a very all-in person. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it to the extreme. And I did very well, very well. Dude, yeah, I probably you. set records. I probably <laughs> set many records, um, which which my dad was the same way. Like when he was in college, um, which I didn't learn till afterwards. Like I, when I did that vlog episode on the previous vlog, the Daily Bread, um, you know, the hundredth episode. Literally, the thumbnail was just a picture of me and it said alcoholic. Ooh. And I talked about how like over the first hundred episodes, which started in January one that I had been documenting my entire life and hadn't even mentioned the fact that 20 days prior to that I had quit drinking and that I had been struggling with it over this whole 100 episodes. And by coming out and being vulnerable and, and talking about it, um, so many incredible conversations were sparked. And, but the funny thing is I had, I, I had to call my dad that night yeah. because my parents didn't know it was an issue and my mom always watches the vlogs and yeah. she worries about me a lot anyways, just about me and my sister, that she just, that's just her. Um, and so I, had, I was calling my dad to prep him, like, hey, just so you know, expect a call from mom. She's probably not going to be happy. So it's coming. And he's like, she's sitting right here. We've already watched it. And I'm like, oh, God. Uh, but it turned into this incredible conversation about, like, the stuff that he dealt with um, when he was younger and um, when I was, you know, a baby. Um, but, like, the, com but, but the conversations that have sparked 
Um, you know, one of my really close friends now that lives in um, New Jersey, you met Jason. Um, he quit drinking like six months ago. Uh, Bryce, remember Bryce yep. that we did the podcast with? Oh, and you were I like, something's, you're like, something's different about you. Like, what's different about you? Dude. He had quit drinking like three months before. Yep. And it was just this uh, weird thing. And again, it's not like we're on some like, like adventure to like, it's not get everyone a, to quit drinking. It's like, not it has an nothing, adventure to do nothing that. That's nothing right. whatsoever. But there's someone listening or watching this that has another area that they're struggling in. That's right. You know, maybe it's like adultery or maybe it's like pornography. Maybe if it's cheating and maybe it's like bad business practices. It's, uh, someone's got something. We've someone's all got something. addicted we all to something. something. Yeah. And that's like that. Remember that one um, talk we did at Top Gun uh, when I asked everybody, like, what's that? What's the one area in your life that you're pretending isn't a problem? That you're thinking right now. Yeah. The thing that right you thought now. of right there. That's it. Whatever that is, that's the problem. Um, but I think the important thing coming out of this video is understanding that you, if you could have, if you could have tackled it and 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 beat it on your own, you already would have. That's a fact. True. And so it takes accountability. It takes a group of people um, to hold you accountable. Uh, that's the, one of the biggest things I've learned through this process of we call them life goals, or you can call it core four. But having these goals in all areas of life is that if you don't have accountability. It's not even worth having the goals at, at all, right? right? Like the reason you hadn't beat it the first time is because no one was keeping you account, holding you accountable, and you were trying to hold yourself accountable. And what did uh, I which tell just you? Doesn't work. I told you in the Miami airport when when you said you wanted help. I told you, you really want help? Hmm. Yeah, great. My help is is it's expensive, and I will piss test you. You were like, what? <laughs> like, but that's that's holding each other accountable. Like, you wanted to win on that. And we never even had to do it. You won. I was so impressed. I'm so impressed with both of y'all. That is that is impressive. So we're getting, Jeff, so we're getting second had, watches in about a month. What? Um, so we're going to do this again. No, no, no. We, no. <laughs> that's not happening. But Jeff, Jeff's straps. had four drinks his whole life. So what we're going to do after this <laughs> is we're going to get him wasted. <laughs> And see if we can create a problem that we can now fix in two years. <laughs> yeah. but, get another watch. And we get another oh, watch. Hallelujah. But, but man, it's not the watch. Like people, man, things are not important. The, the houses, yeah. the watches, the cars, the, the thing. It's never the thing. Like when we set money goals and we go, okay, I'm going to make 500,000. I'm going to make a million. I'm going to make a million five. I'm going to make two million a year. Whatever it is. When we set those money goals, it's never the money or the thing. It's what it represents. If you set your, if you set your sights on a Panerai watch, a $10,000 Panerai watch, and you finally make it to it, it's so empty. It's so empty. It doesn't mean a thing. And you'll, you'll look at it and you'll be like, oh, that's great. I can tell time on it and whatever. But it literally, it has the same components. It's made up of the same material as a watch that's 50 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's what it represents. So when you're, when you're looking at accomplishing something in life and it has to do with material things, has to do with a watch, has to do with a car, has to do with a certain amount of income, it's what it represents. It's what you're able to do with it. It's what, like that watch to me, man, when I'm telling you every time I pull my wrist up and I look at it, I think Zane and Creed got their daddy back. Isn't that crazy? That's exactly what I think. Zane and Creed got their daddy back. That's so good. I don't even look at the time half the time. I'm just like, Zane and Creed got their daddy back. It's because he didn't pick out the moment numbers on it. Right. <laughs> right, I can't uh, fucking tell so time on that thing anyway. <laughs> I don't even wind it half the time. <laughs> I'm like, just like it's, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a, like one in the morning on me all the time, you know? Mm. You know, that's probably one of the greatest things is, is um, being sober and not having the alcohol in my system is being present everywhere that I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No worries. You remember everything. That's you great. remember that's, people. That's another plus. <laughs> yeah. Remember what I you say. You remember and people and. But uh, it's yeah, it's, it's no. But your memories though that that's incredible. You remember all of them. 
I mean, the Absolutely, memories that when you're out and doing stuff, and I'm you present, met somebody. I'm there. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm Nate, there. there's probably some things you. It's pretty good you forgot. <laughs> I'm sure, and, and hopefully other people forget too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully other people have short memories. <laughs> uh, man, I tell you what, there's no, there's no more, there's no other people I'd rather be in business with than the four of y'all, mm -hmm. including Likewise. me. The three of y'all, including me. <laughs> 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 the four of us. <laughs> he said he wanted to go in business for himself. And uh, geez. But nobody. I, I appreciate y'all, man. I'm thankful for y'all. And, dude, I tell you what. We face things together, period. No matter what it is. And, uh, you know, whatever the issues. Jeff will find yours eventually. Jeff just doesn't seem to have any issues. But we'll find them. <laughs> and when we do we'll face them together but uh but i love you guys and i appreciate y'all and dude i'm i'm so thankful for the watches it's really cool but uh but man that means nothing compared to the friendship yeah it's the support that all of you you know the closest people to me and that gave me to do this um i knew that i was leading up to it too um, I remember when Haley put on Facebook like two months prior to me quitting, she lost her mother to alcoholism. Yeah. She didn't have a problem with alcohol, but she saw the problem in me and she quit herself and put it all over Facebook and made it public that she wasn't yeah. going to have a crutch, even though to me it wasn't, she didn't have a problem. She was doing that for me. And, um, and I remember talking to her about it. I quit it. for 11 months. Yep. I didn't have a drink for 11 months. That wasn't for me. That was just for you. Yeah. And, I mean, and to have people in your life that that love you that much, that don't have a problem with something, but are willing to go that step and do it themselves to help you, is that you, I can't say enough about that. It's unbelievable. You know, and the owner of Frank's is a friend of mine, has known me for 15 years, has seen the struggle. I can remember coming in here and coming into her businesses and salons and being half lit. And, and I remember, I could remember Melanie looking at me, worried to death about me. And, um, you know, and I, I still have a great friendship with her and, and her support and her being so proud and seeing what I've been able to do is, is awesome. And uh, so it's just, it, it's a great feeling to have people on the other side rather than being disappointed and worried or fearful or whatever they're just like wow he's done it and they're and they're proud of you and you know being in sales and a very driven person um the the recognition for that and that admiration goes a long way and i i won't deny that one bit i've loved every moment of that and even with perfect strangers it it is uh it definitely has helped me it's so I think a good way to close this, I think it's a good recommendation for people. Um, as a company, we all read a book together. Um, cool. And right now we're reading Daring Greatly by Brene uh, Brown. <clears throat> I think I've said it five times today. That Brene Brown, I think she knows what she was talking I think about. She knows what, I think she knows um, what she's doing. But it reminds me in that book where, where she asked the, this auditorium of people, she said, uh, how many of you uh, view vulnerability as weakness? And everyone raised their hand. And she said, but how many of you would view someone that would stand on the stage and talk about something that was vulnerable as courage? And everyone raised their hand. They're like, huh, that's interesting. And it's, it's interesting that when you start having these conversations about something that is a struggle in your life, which is being vulnerable, how it's actually flipped and perceived as strength because they're like, man, that's awesome that you're doing that. Like it's, 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 it's what you view as a weakness, others will view as a strength in you. Uh, which is uh, which is interesting so that's an awesome awesome book um, for those of you that haven't haven't read it and just another example of why our organization and, and what we're doing is so different like we were not just we like all of our employees are reading a book and we get together every two weeks and talk about what that chapter meant for each and every person in our organization um, which is those conversations are priceless I mean like tomorrow yeah tomorrow we're all getting together and we're talking about the challenge was to either 
give forgiveness or get forgiveness from that one person. And whoever that one person is, they just came up in your mind just like that. And so that's the challenge for everybody in our organization. And we're filming it and we're actually sending it to, um, we're going to send it to a couple that are friends of ours that lost their 18 year old daughter. And in the, in the eulogy, they said, don't send us flowers, just forgive somebody. And we looked at that and we went, you know what? Let's do that as a company. Let's challenge every person in our company to go and forgive someone or get forgiveness from them because we all have those people. And then let's film it and let's send it to them because their 18 year old didn't die for nothing. She didn't die for nothing. So how many uh, lunch or coffee invites have you gotten over the last two weeks? What's that? How many lunch or coffee invites have you gotten over the last two weeks from None. our employees? Zero. <laughs> None. Nobody gave you any forgiveness? Um, I've gotten a lot of emails <laughs> that I haven't read. <laughs> Tyler looked at me today and he was like, uh, we gotta, we got to forgive somebody. Hey, are you free in a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, never take a relationship for granted. You may run into somebody that is by a thin thread, it could change your life. And um, I can tell you that's happened more than many times actually. And so never just assume and blow somebody off um, in a situation, it may be a lunch, maybe a dinner, maybe out some night with your wife her husband and um, you meet somebody and you wonder why. Nathan, you've done that a hundred times and uh, I've seen that and um, but I really started doing that and I've gotten emails and some texts and different things from, hey, it was good to meet you. Don't know where most of that stuff doesn't go anywhere, but there's a few that may, you know, for whatever reason and it may be personal, maybe business, maybe both and uh, so yeah, that's mine. So, so, what, so the way I would challenge each and every one of you that are watching this, if you've gotten to this point in this video, that means there's probably something that's been swirling around in your brain um, that you've been thinking about this entire time. And what I can tell you is that is the issue that you need to work on. And so I would just pose a challenge. Um, put in the comments, whatever it is, uh, and tag somebody in it. Tag someone that you love, that you trust, um, that you know will hold you accountable and that will at least spark a conversation around this topic. Um, if it's too personal uh, and you don't want to put it out there for everyone to see, um, just make this commitment to yourself that you are going to reach out to someone. Um, you cannot do it by yourself. If you could, you already would have. Um, so that would be my challenge. Put it in the comments or if it is too personal uh, and you don't want to go uh, that far, reach out to somebody um, in the next 24 hours and just let them know. Um, meet up for coffee, uh, go to lunch, uh, just uh, whatever you gotta do. Um, these things are important and uh, accountability uh, is key.